<laughs> well, I understand you have a cousin who is a well-known, experienced sailor. That's right. My cousin Sam. He worked for Spyglass Catalog back in the 70s. He taught me what gear I need to, uh, to go sailing. He was known in the day as Super Sam Spyglass. And he gave me this telescope here. And uh, <laughs> OK, there you are. <laughs> well, I understand you were given a nickname on the, by the crew you sailed with on the Transpac. Mr. Gadget? <laughs> How, however could that have happened? Oh, I got it, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> what was that? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cousin Super Sam taught me to be prepared for everything. This comes in handy when you run aground or get shipwrecked in San Francisco Bay. Oh. I must have been shipwrecked or around 127 times. I wrote all about it. But things are a lot safer here in Ventura. Although, the breakwater can still jump out in front of you when you aren't looking. Careful, careful, Commodore, we need you for another couple months. <laughs> All right, Commodore, <clears throat> what's that whale bone? What's that about? Oh, that! I, uh, I, I, uh, I bought that for Doris. <laughs> huh. Now that sounds like a story. I heard that was the infamous Newport to Turtle Bay race. We were the only boat that finished. We finished? <laughs> <laughs> With the sail all rounded up and torn and stuff. Well, the story I heard goes like this. You wanted to get a t-shirt for Doris. Yeah, Turtle Bay. <laughs> well, Turtle Bay is just a little backwards. They haven't quite got the idea of tourist t-shirts yet. But we walked every street and every back alley. You know what we found? We found one of them adult toy stores. <laughs> we went there looking for a t-shirt. They laughed, but they had stuff for Doris. <laughs> well, we won't go there. <laughs> I have no knowledge of that. <laughs> we, we drug Craig away from there, and we're back at the beach. Yeah, let's see, where's my script going here? Oh, okay. And Craig finds the whale bone, and he says, i got to have it for Doris. Doris always wanted a whale bone. <laughs> but, Commodore, didn't you know that whale bone importation is illegal? <laughs> Why? The whale doesn't need it anymore. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> there she blows! Well, Commodore, the illegal importation of whale bones still makes you a smuggler. Actually, I didn't bring it into the country. I convinced Eisenhardt's crew to bring it in. <laughs> they smuggled, I mean brought it in. <laughs> Uh, they hid it in a lazarette, and I haven't been to Smuggler's Cove in years, so I can't be a smuggler. <laughs> uh, well, okay. Yeah, try and cover it up. I heard you tried to burn it up in the fire, too, but I got the evidence. <laughs> okay, I understand some of your Transpac shipmates have questioned your steering ability. Everybody knows Eisenhardt can't cook. So I intentionally broached the boat in order to put a little salt or uh, water or uh, uh, on, the, on the lunch. Lunch was, was uh, it needed some extra stuff. A little broach, huh? Mast in the water, the port over the galley was open, and a fire hose of salt water into the tuna salad. Yep, we got a little extra salt on lunch that day. Well, it wasn't going to be very good anyway. <laughs> 
All right. Well, thank you, Commodore Leverall. <laughs> Although we're not entirely sure about your steering and your veracity concerning whale bones, we know you're lucky to have Doris as your wife, and obviously <laughs> nobody else will probably put up with you. So <laughs> you got the friendship of everyone here at BYC. <laughs> Uh, Craig, did any of your family wanted to say anything? Uh, okay, come on up. Is this the guy with the bad bicycle? Uh, no, I got a good bicycle. Um, so, um, my name is Roderick Smith. I'm really happy to be here. A friend of Craig's for many, many years. He asked me to. Uh, Hold the mic to your mouth. That's <laughs> <laughs> it. Swallow it. <laughs> okay. He asked me to uh, say a few words, and I said, "Well, you know, it's a roast. Uh, I've never done a roast before. All you know, I could do is say something funny." Um, but uh, you know, honestly, I can't think of anything funny about Craig. <laughs> You guys probably know that, but he's, he's one of the most serious guys that I've known. And I've known him for a long time. But by the same token, there's something rather funny about him. So I wanted to follow that path just a little bit. And tell you a little bit about how we met and where he started and where I got first, uh, first sight of him and where he uh, has ended up today. Uh, we first crossed paths in Rochester, New York in the fall of uh, 1969. We had a few classes together and in fact made a couple of short films. I think that, that may have bonded us making those films. But uh, there's more than that. He told me he was from Jonestown. And uh, I said, wow, I'm from Jonestown too. How come we never met? These are a small town. It turns out he was from Jonestown, New York and I was from Jonestown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool. Both towns being pretty small. Uh, in fact, at the time, I was coming from a small town in, uh, in northern New York. Um, so we both came to RIT in Rochester, New York, kind of a country bumpkin, so you might say. Uh, everybody there is from Philadelphia, New York, and Boston. But similarities continued between us. Craig lived near the Sacandagua Reservoir, otherwise known as the Great Sacandagua Lake, headwaters of the Hudson River. I lived on the shores of Lake Champlain. He sailed, so did I. But here comes a slight variation. His boat was bigger than mine. That is to say, he had a jib. <laughs> well, I bobbed along in a Boston whaler built nine foot bathtub called a squaw, which if trimmed to the waterline might be called a sunfish. Now, this is important because to this day I realize the difference, and this is funny speaking to a bunch of sailors, but. The difference in running to sail has a lot to do with the jib. Because without a jib, I was destined to be a landlocked artist all my life. And Craig, with his jib, would go on to high adventures on the rolling sea and eventually land him right here with a Commodore's cap atop his head. But I do recall one revealing evening at RIT that made me realize that this Pisces dreamer was perhaps slightly beyond the pale. He called me and said, come on up to my room. I've got an album I want you to hear. With a few friends, we ventured up to his dorm room, and there he was, greeting us with that Leverall smile, which he carries to this day. You can imagine, we were all being blasted with new music at the time. So many bands, us country boys never even heard of. Grateful Dead, The Who, Dylan, Jefferson Airplane, Hendrix, The Animals, Zappa. All these things were in our heads spinning. New material was coming in every day. It was a billowing cloud of smoke and rock and roll. So of course we were anxious to hear what Craig had found to throw on this mounting pyre of sound. Sit down, he instructs us. This is going to blow you away. Cross-legged on the floor, we pass the pipe. Craig, Craig tall and lanky, sporting a beard, stoops over his record player, drops the needle. At first it's silence, and I'm thinking, oh no, not the moody blues. <laughs> and then a wishing sound, a lapping sound. 
or rushing sound. They're lapping, they're rushing and wishing over and over and over again. And seagulls. <laughs> it eventually dawned on us there in that dorm room with all hell bursting, bursting loose all around us at that college campus. We were listening to the sounds of the ocean. Full vinyl, both sides. <laughs> My God, I thought. He has an album of the sea with waves endlessly lapping on the shore. <laughs> what in the... <laughs> it was in that moment I realized that my good friend Craig was very, very, was a very funny fellow. <laughs> All right, that's our program for this evening. Uh, I want to thank, what is it, Dottie, now? Uh, now if you do, I'd like to have the microphone. Oh, I don't think so. Do <laughs> I think you left that first picture up a little too long. There'll be no microphone for you. I want to thank Dottie and Flash for once oh, yeah. again for putting this together. Okay. For a couple of my buddies actually trying to help me out, Bob Beck, Dave Boatner, and Jeff Beller. All right. And I think to the only friend that uh, Craig could get to show up here tonight. <laughs> you did a great job. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. Have a good evening. Here's the microphone. You better watch what you say. Yeah. If any of you are interested, I have a slide presentation that will show more pictures of Craig and his family. So it's just, it was supposed to run during dinner after the program. So I know some of you want to leave, but if you're interested in seeing it, uh, I'm going to hook it up to the uh, TV. Okay.